Hello and welcome to Somerville Media Center Live for March 3rd, 2021. I'm Joe Lynch. I am here once again with the school committee update with Chair Andre Green. Andre, before we start, you have two major pieces of information that we're going to be talking about today. But before we start, a math quiz. You ready? I guess so. Okay. If Joe has 318,000 pieces of candy and he gives Charlie 150,000 pieces of candy, but Charlie needs 1.4 million pieces of candy, what happens to that equation? What happens is we hope Joe makes, we, we hope Joe makes more candy and keeps giving it to Charlie. And that Charlie gives it to, to the teachers in the right order. She teaches first. <laughs> that is the correct answer, Andre. You have passed today's quiz. Somebody needs to be making more pieces of candy to Charlie to satisfy Charlie. And apparently, you know, the to to, to Joe's credit, they're doing that, right? Like I think Merck's gonna be helping Johnson and Johnson make their vaccines. Like the kinds of paying other companies to make the vaccines and paying you know, the companies who made the vaccines for letting them do that. That should have been happening months ago, it's finally starting. Um, so hopefully that will impact speed up vaccine rollout. Okay, so those of you who are just tuning in, Andre Green passed the math quiz today and now he's trying to explain where the deficit is. But before we jump in, Andre, first terrific piece of news, I think a lot of people are pleased that the Somerville Public School Systems will start to reopen tomorrow in a phased in way. And I'm gonna leave the details to you. So if we can start with, um, I think you, before the show, you were telling me you paid a little bit of a visit to one of the classrooms today. Sure, so, you know, tomorrow, our, high, our uh, four day week uh, special needs students will start, will resume in-person learning. Um, and the this morning, Mr. Christian and I went so the teachers, the teachers have been in, in their classrooms since Monday. Uh, so Patricia and I this morning visited those classrooms at the new at the new high school. Um, just you know, thank them to see what's up. You know, people were hard at work. I was there at eight thirty this morning, and people were were deep in it. Um, teachers were excited to be to have to see their their kids tomorrow. Um, you know, principals principals because basically we've turned the high school into some of our elementary schools. So, you know, there's, there's a Winter Hill section of the high school. There's a Healy section of the high school. There's a Kennedy section of the high school. And so we saw principals at hard at work. Um, you know, we saw, one of the things I always love about touring uh, buildings with the superintendent is her attention to detail. So like she was taking pictures of places where like, you know, we still needed to, to plug an outlet or, you know, like, and I think, you know, one of the things I've, I've always learned is that we all have this vague sense that we think we know how schools run because we spent 13 years in one. And, you know, this is my sixth year on the school committee, my second year as chair. Um, and I'm still learning so much of the details that, you know, we have to take seriously for schools to run, right? Like we ran into uh, Mr. Hurry of the Kennedy School who was you know, making sure that there was gonna be adequate toilet paper, right? Um, because, you know, come 8.25 tomorrow morning, you wanna make sure we have toilet paper for all the kids. Um, and it's a school just, supply, no matter yeah. which way you look at it. Right. You know, and, you know I watched, you know, t teachers, you know, making sure that they were, you know, actually measuring out the six feet of the, 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 the I wanna give DPW credit for helping get teachers out their buildings. You know, there's just a lot, a lot to be done, and it was exciting to see it being done. But everyone's so happy to be coming back tomorrow. You know, I think that Andre, on a personal note, that is the beginning of a great new phase. That people are actually excited about what they're going to be doing. And I think you know, when I, one of the things I, I kept kept saying during you know we're, we're talking about negotiations. And there are certainly districts that you know have opened up with, with I think, a great deal of labor strife. And you know, one of the reasons it was important to me to try to avoid that, try to do this in a collaborative um, way, which I think we have, is because it's so the difference for you know 
a student success and a reopening success and getting kids actually to come back and getting parents to come back. Between having a teacher who is active and engaged, we want to see you, we want you back, we're excited to be doing this with you, and teachers who have been coerced, I think it's night and day, right? If we want to do this as well as possible, the district and its teachers have to be on the same page. I'm glad to say we are. So, so you, the beginning of your, your opening was, we are doing this in a phased in way. There are students who need the additional time and they have been prioritized to come back first. Right. And then, so that begins tomorrow in earnest with their teachers that they know, but the key to adjustment is they're coming back into a different facility. Right. Than what they've used to knowing. Right. right. So I think, and I, and I think, you know, one of the reasons for doing it in phases is because it's also just for us, right? Like, you know, again, I've worked, you know, between, you know, the planning and the operations and logistics, people have worked tirelessly to make this work. But we know that there are going to be things that we're going to have to adjust and change and pr probably just about missed over the next two weeks um, before the next phase of students comes in. And, you know, and when that happens and, and there's more students in the buildings and there's more stuff going on, then we have other things to learn, right? So like, it's like any other massive project. You don't do all of it at once. You do it in phases so that you can have time to make mistakes. Um, it looks like it's all families who won't make any mistakes. We, we will, right? There are things that we just can't know and things we were, we, we guessed wrong on all other things. So this way we get to make, make those mistakes in a way that actually is fixable. Well, I think the key, you know, whenever we try to measure success, um, we look at what is the primary goal? And the primary goal here is to get the children of this city back into in-person learning in a very safe, controlled way. Right. And what you're saying, and I totally agree with you, Andre, we need to do it with the cooperation and the patience of everyone with right. the goal of getting those kids back into school. Right. So teachers are gonna be patient with their kids. The kids hopefully are gonna be patient with their teachers, um, school committee, educators, unions, city officials, DPW workers, maintenance workers, cafeteria workers. Everyone has to understand it's not about anything but getting these kids back into school. Right. And we all accept that, you know, tomorrow is not, not going to look, look like September of 19. Um, it's also not going to look like September 21, right? Like, this is an iterative growth process. And, you know, I know one of the things we hear a lot is people want us to guarantee that we'll be at five days a week in um, September. And I wish I could break news and say I can make a guarantee, but it's ultimately out of, out of our control, right? Like, if the CDC is still recommending six feet of distance, we don't have the space for six, you know, my hope is going to what I think is probably your next piece of good news, which is vaccinations. My hope is that between vaccinations and, and declining numbers and, you know, whatever events happen between now and September, that we will be at a place where it's at three feet or even no feet and at three feet, it'll be tight, but we might, we probably can do it with some swing space. You know, that's one of the things we're, we're trying to figure out now is how that would look, what three feet would look like. Um, at six feet, you know, obviously physicists is thing, just you know, so put kids literally on the ceiling, it can't be done. But that is everyone, everyone's hope, right? Like we're all trying to be at a place where come September, it's five days a week. And Andre, I'll just be, you know, on the flip side of it, be prepared. You're gonna have people that you're not gonna satisfy. Oh. And the least little thing will, could devolve into a big issue. But I, I think patience is the key to this whole thing. So let me go back to, we're utilizing a brand new building, the high school itself, which poses, <coughs> excuse me, poses some problems. You have a brand new building, some things couldn't, may not work properly. Right. Where are the other buildings that the kids are going back starting this week and next? So the, the next phase of buildings um, is the Capuano, which is, you know, for us, super important to have it on as much as possible because it's, designed for small for small people um the east and then genziano uh you know the kennedy will follow up then um 
the Nahili, we will not be having the brown or the white hole line this year. Okay, okay. And, and this phased in approach um, has been worked out between the city, the school committee and the educators union. Yes. So I, I wanna give you enough time um, and keep my mouth shut about this until you explain it. So the Biden administration, and which dictates why we were doing your math test right. first, the Biden administration announced this week that they will be ramping up production and that the president would like all educators to be vaccinated by a certain date. Right. And the reason I did that math problem was unless the, the federal government supplies the vaccine to the states, they may not be able to meet those dates. I mean, that's the plain and simple math of it. So yes and no, um, you know, Kentucky's already has already vaccinated all its teachers. Um, but they also started earlier than Massachusetts. Right, that's right. my point. Um, you know, West Virginia has been the gold standard for vaccinating its, its population to, to date, right? So these are certainly not insurmountable problems. Um, you know, I am I was glad to wake up this morning, as I think many people were, to hear that uh, CBS, which gets its vaccines directly from the federal government, has already changed its policies in accordance with the, federal, with, with the president's um, I request. And I, 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 want, I want to say do, do not only to it that is actual request, but we said every every teacher have at least the first shot of a two shot vaccine by March thirty first. Um, we know that you know for both of the two shot vaccines, that still gets you at like seventy percent effectiveness. So it's not like it's it's not it's certainly not nothing. Um, and obviously the the Johnson Johnson one shot vaccine could potentially be a game changer. Um, so yeah, I think certainly it can be done. Um, it does. But, it, but Andre, here in Massachusetts, we have 400,000 educators and staff that have been now put into our priority status. Right. We got a problem yep, because we only have 150,000 that are coming every week. It requires, in case Massachusetts, both a better rollout in general, right? Like, you know, a working website would, would be a good first step. Um, you know, yeah, adding people to a broken system isn't going to make the system less broken. Um, it does require that you know more vaccines be get started getting produced like yesterday, um, and it, yeah, and again, I think the big thing is requires is require that a, an administration at the state level that has you know to this date made a dog's mess of the vaccine made roll out find some competence. Well, I look at it this way, Andre. Twenty-four states across the country were educating their. Uh, were vaccine were vaccine were administering vaccines to their educators before Massachusetts. Yep. So there is no disagreement on my part that we bungled this in terms of the educators because everyone was screaming, "You got to get the kids back into school." Well, you can't get the kids back into school if the adults that are going back to school with them are not vaccinated. Well, you can if you're if you are a you know well-funded suburban district with plenty of space and frankly a population that hasn't been hit by COVID, right? Like it is hard to talk about Matthew's response to COVID without talking about race and class, right? Like if you're like, we know that this is a disease that has had wildly disproportionate effects on uh, blacks and, Latina, and Latinos. And so community and so community and school districts that don't have many blacks and Latinos, COVID is objectively less of a risk. Um, and districts have acted accordingly, which has only served to exaggerate real classist divides in our, in our system. So let's let's face another issue head on. We're adding more recipients of the vaccine without adequate supply. And I loved what you said, and I'm going to try to paraphrase it. You don't start adding more um, to a broken system. What did you? How did you phrase that? Adding more people to a broken system doesn't fix the system. Doesn't 100%. fix the system. Thank you. 100%. And that's so, place. Go ahead. so what we may have, though, is you already have people who are in a priority situation. Those 75 and over, those 65 and over with comorbidities are our first responders. 
do we even know within those first categories how many still remain to be vaccinated? I certainly do not. Uh, I hope that I hope that the state does, but I wouldn't count on it. I wouldn't bet on it. I, I wouldn't um, bet on it either, Andre. Yep. So now we're adding four hundred thousand more recipients. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, four hundred thousand more recipients, and we don't even know how many we still have to vaccinate. You know, we we have now twice now elected Charlie Baker to be this great manager. If it was a time to show it, this is it. Sure sounds like. It sounds like to me he should be going back to school and help learn how to do math. And you know, I love it. They all did physics, right? Like this, this attempt to get us all in person, you know, by April first again fails physics, right? Like for most urban school districts, including Somerville, at six feet separation, which is still what the CDC CDC recommends, you literally can't fit everyone. So this is, you know, I wish I had a, I had a state government that knew physics, that knew math, that under, understood the logistical challenges that it was putting in front of districts, but we don't. Also, not for nothing, but it'd be much easier to safely open schools if we weren't opening a Finley Park. I'm a diehard Sox fan, don't get me wrong. I look forward to the day where I can go to Finley Park safely and watch the Sox game again. But that day isn't, that day isn't opening day, it just isn't. Well, I mean, that's where it comes down to, and I, I don't want to get into these esoteric kind of things, but Andre, that's where it comes into, your, you understand how to prioritize how things should be done. Not that I am Mother Teresa in any way, shape, or form, but if I have to give up my place in line uh, to an educator who's going to bring kids back to school, I'll gladly do it. I will hold the door open for them. And that's kind of, it's funny you said that because I was thinking about this recently, like, you know, being a black man of a certain age who, you know, could stand to lose some weight and probably has high blood pressure, I probably have the necessary com comorbidities to get in the, to get in the queue. But I'm also, you know, I, I have a job where I work from home. You know, I'm, I'm not actually at much risk of getting COVID. So it feels to me that I'm okay with waiting a little bit longer to get the, get the vaccine. Yeah, but there's the nuance, Andre. Your child at some point will be going back to in-person learning. Right. And um, what if, right, she comes home and she passes that to you? And I think, you know, it's, that's obviously something that every family has to, has to weigh up for themselves. You know, speaking for myself personally, I am cognizant that both, you know, I and my daughter are, are covered in you know six foot layer deep thick layer of privilege right like getting COVID for me would be would, would suck but it probably isn't fatal right 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 well you know we can you and I have these conversations online in public I have these conversations offline with members of my family who are pushing me to get vaccinated and I said I, I can conduct my life in a very sane way right. for the next month if I have to wait for it, right. right? I'll wait, but there are segments of the population that should be prioritized. And I've always said that. 100%. So I wanna get into the happy news. The happy news is that Somerville in-person learning for our kids and our educators happens begins to happen tomorrow. So it leads to another conversation that how are we going to administer the vaccine when it becomes available to our educators? So what we're doing is we're putting educators back into the classroom without a vaccine. Yeah. I would love it if going back to our manager, our, our manager in chief having a better plan, you know, if if Baker were to give the city of Somerville and Somerville Public Schools to, you know, supply the vaccine and give it to teachers. We would set up a, a, a station in our schools tomorrow, right? That is not, that is something we would love to do, but you know, we have to have, to have the vaccines to do it. And I would bet you're not the only chairperson of a school committee in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts who is saying the same thing. You I may get- I am not. Yeah, I think we'd all be happy to do it. Lowell, Fitchburg, Springfield, Pittsfield, Fall River, New Bedford, all of those folks are saying the same thing. Charlie, give us the vaccine and we'll administer it. Right. 
And I think it's, you know, I, I know you want us to know that the, the, the cities you mentioned were not a coincidence. Um, you know, I think it's important. You know, Somerville is a, uni a unique community. And one way this way it's unique is that it, you know, is this very interesting blend of, you know, your Arlington's, your Belmont's, and your Chelsea's, your Revere's, right? Like it's, we've got elements of both of those communities. But when it looks at very much looking at our um, school system and our resources and our challenges, oftentimes they look more like those of a Fall River or Lawrence or Chelsea or Revere Lynn, right? We are an urban school district with all the challenges that that implies. Um, we are well, blessed to have more resources than many of those urban school districts. You know, not a lot, right? And we're, and we're certainly not in you know, a Cambridge's league, but you know, we can we, we can open. I think Chelsea's right to still be remote, right? Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a conversation a little while ago. Um, I don't know if you know her, um, Gladys Vega over at the Chelsea Collaborative. I and, do uh, actually for my day job role, but um. yeah, yeah. And and I, I have to tell you, if there's not a plaque or a bronze statue um, being put up or thought about to put up for Gladys Vega over in Chelsea, a woman who is just on the go um, 20 hours a day over there. So we have, I think, my opinion, I think we have a lot to be proud of here in Somerville, but I also think we have a lot of improvement to go. 100%. Yeah, and I think you know, we, and you, you're talking about the Chelsea Collaborative. I get, get, put my hat on for a second. I think when you look at, you know, real work to really provide full spectrum public supports and social supports to, to, you know, population that need it. For all of their resource limitations, the Chelsea, Chelsea Collaborative is, is the gold standard, right? Like, and so I want to, you know, I think there's a lot to learn there, and I think as a school district, you know. And I, it's part of what I can say this because Almi Almi Obeda, their, their superintendent, used to be our social superintendent. Um, so you know, we consider her a summer ball alum. But I think there's things we can learn, right? Like um, they are really good at getting you know feedback and data from the Spanish speaking populations, and we are trying to learn some of their tricks, right? Like um, that's a place where we have, we we can get it, but it's, it's tends to be qualitative and tends to be very labor intensive. Um, well, Andre, you know we're, we're, you and I can talk for hours. You know right. that, but um, here we are on uh, March third, slow rolling, um, hopefully to be accelerated of the Somerville Public School System in person learning begins tomorrow, March fourth. To all of the participants who got there to make that work, congratulations and mostly to the educators and the students. Um, going back, I wish you all the best and patience all around. You know, I think I, tomorrow's gonna be great. I, you know, we'll, we'll work it through for two weeks, then hopefully then we'll bring in the next, the next batch of students who need to be in. And from there on, the plan is every week or two to bring in more. And if you wanna see this successful program continue, do not forget, wash your hands, wear your mask, stay socially distanced, and do not let down your guard. The virus is still yes. out there, folks. I recognize that bakers decided that restaurants are, are free and clear now. Don't get out, people. Like, we're almost there. The end is in sight. Don't blow it. Just <laughs> a conversation for another hat that I wear. Yeah. And you know how I have to balance that one. Yeah. But um, school reopening, March 4th vaccines coming for the educators and staff of our kids. Please, Andre, extend the congratulations to your colleagues, the superintendent, and the city workers who are gonna make this work. And they've been working hard, so I will make sure they all hear that. Terrific. For the Somerville Media Center, I'm Joe Lynch. Thanks for joining us with this school committee update with Chair Andre Green. Until next time, please stay safe, stay informed. We'll see you then. Thank you, Andre. Thank you.